Hello everyone, this is Rahul Sreshth and I am here to present the second part of measurement chapter for class 8. So last time we read about measurement and understood that it is a comparison of an unknown physical quantity with a known standard quantity of the same kind. And in our previous examples, the known physical quantities were the length of this box and the mass of sugar while the standard quantities that we used to measure them were the measuring scale and this beam balance. I hope you people might have understood the meaning of measurement nicely watching my previous video and if suppose you have not seen the previous video yet, I would request you to please check out that video first. Now coming back, today the topic of our discussion will be physical quantities and its types fundamental and derived quantities. So, what are physical quantities? If we look at the definition, anything which can be measured is termed as physical quantities. Basically, kunai pani kura jun hamlai measure garna milsa quantitatively are physical quantities. And if you remember last time, I said that all different objects in the universe have different types of properties. And among those, there are certain properties which can be measured and certain other properties which we cannot. So all those properties are either the physical or the non-physical quantities. Just like Hamlai measure Garna Milsa are the physical quantities which are quantitative. And just like measure Garna Mildena, those are non-physical quantities which cannot be quantified. So things like length, mass, time, temperature, etc. are all physical quantities which can be measured using different tools and techniques. While things like love, hatred, anger and emotions kind of stuffs cannot be measured and are non-physical. Now try to understand that in order to express any physical quantity appropriately, we need to have two things which is its magnitude ya size pani vanna milsa ra usko units. Suppose, for example, if I say I walked 5 kilometers yesterday or I bought 2 kg sugar or I will be there in 20 minutes. Now, in each one of these statements, I am talking about some kind of physical quantity, namely length, mass and time. So, when I am saying I walked 5 kilometers yesterday, I am actually talking about the length or distance I walked yesterday. In that same manner, here I am saying the mass of sugar I bought. Aniya, I will tell you how much more time I will take to be there. So, in these statements, these 5 km, 2 kg, and 20 minutes are the physical quantities. And in order to represent them, we have taken the help of magnitudes and units. This 5, 2, and 20 represents magnitudes here while kilometer, kg and minutes represent the units. Now tell me what do you think will happen if I remove either the magnitude or the units from these statements? Do you think removing either of the two will give us complete sense of these quantities? Let's see. Now here I have tried to use just the magnitude to represent the previous statements. Do you think it makes any sense? If I say I walked 5 yesterday, it doesn't clarify if I walked 5 kilometers or 5 miles yesterday. In that same manner, in the next statement, 2 sugar does not give us clear idea if I bought 2 kg sugar or 2 sacks of sugar. Now this tells us that removing the units does not seem to be a good idea. In fact, not just units. Even magnitude 2 plays a very important role in this. You can clearly see that having removed the magnitudes here does not do any well either. So now as we have seen that removing either of the two does not give us a clear understanding of the quantities, we can say that the magnitude and its proper units clearly plays a very important role in defining any physical quantity. In fact, Physical quantity is itself represented as the product of magnitude and units. Now moving forward, physical quantities are of two types. 
fundamental physical quantities and derived physical quantities. Now those quantities which cannot be represented in terms of any other physical quantity are known as fundamental physical quantities. Yeah, Nepali ma banam bane. Quantities just like ham lai auru kunai physical quantities ko aadhar ma express karna mil dena. These two quantities lie fundamental quantities. For example, length, mass, time, temperature, all of these are fundamental quantities. Because we cannot represent these quantities in terms of any other quantities. Like, can I say I walked 5 kg yesterday or I bought 5 minutes sugar? No, because it does not make any sense. Now, as we can see here that length cannot be represented by kg and mass by minutes. So, we can say that the length I walked and the mass of sugar here are fundamental quantities as they cannot be expressed using the units of other physical quantities. Yeah, I can definitely say that I walked 5 minutes yesterday. This would be correct. But remember, by changing 5 kilometers into 5 minutes, we have completely changed the physical quantity that we are talking about. Pahila, 5 kilometers vanne bela maile length ko kura gari rathe bane. Ab 5 minutes vanne bela, I am talking about time. So, all in all, the thing is that fundamental quantities, this to kisim ko quantities ho, jun auru quantities ko mathi depend garda ina. Yeah, just like auru quantities le represent karna sakte na. Now, fundamental quantities are of seven different types, which are length, mass, time, temperature, electric current, luminous intensity, and amount of a substance. If we look at their definitions, length is the distance between any two points. Mass is the total amount of matter contained in a body. Time is the duration between any two events. Kunipani duyoda event ko bichako time duration like time balance. In that same manner, temperature is the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. Electric current literally is the current flowing in the electric wires of our homes. Luminous intensity is the intensity or brightness of the light source, you can say. And last term, amount of a substance, which we have in senior classes in chemistry, are the amount of atomic entities in a substance. So these are all the seven fundamental quantities, out of which the first three, length, mass and time, we will be discussing in the later part of this chapter. Now the next type of physical quantities are the derived quantities. If fundamental quantities are the ones which does not depend on other quantities, then derived are the ones which does depend on others. If you look at the definition now, it says that quantities which has to be expressed in terms of other physical quantities are known as derived physical quantities. Now please look closely that I used has to be expressed instead of can be expressed which might have been written in your books but try to understand that can ra has ma ali difference i also what can says is that derived quantities lie oru quantities ko basis ma express garna milsa but garna milsa is not actually correct अगर हम लाई derived quantities represent करना सा बने, हम लाई त्यो quantity को और उस सबई संबंधित quantities लाई express करना ही पर सा, करना मिल सा वाला कुरा सही नहीं है, हम लाई करना ही पर सा, so we must say it has to be expressed instead of can be expressed, suppose if I say I rolled my bike at the speed of 50 km per hour, so here, in order to represent speed, I have to express both kilometer and hours, or you can say this distance and this time. It is not a topic of choice. We have to express all the related quantities here. So that's why I said 
that quantities that has to be expressed in terms of other quantities are the derived quantities. Yeah, you can also say that the quantities that are dependent on other quantities are the derived quantities. Both are correct. Now some examples can be area, density, force, etc. Now let's see how these are the derived quantities. Suppose I need to find the area of this rectangular plane. Now for this, I need to use the formula length into breadth, which are the two dimensions of this rectangular plane. Now understand that both these lengths and breadths are actually distances. One from this point to this point and the other from this point to this point. Now this means that both length and breadth in our formula can be written as length itself. So you can see that area as a quantity depends on two different length, this and this. Thus we can say that area is a derived quantity. Now suppose I need to find the density of this box. And density being the mass per unit volume of an object, its formula would be mass upon volume. Now this mass is a fundamental quantity which we can easily measure using a beam balance. And this volume is again a derived quantity, which is the product of the length, breadth and height of the box, which again are length only. So we can rewrite our formula like this and can clearly see that density here depends upon four different physical quantities, which are the mass and the three dimensions of this particular box. Thus, we can say that density is also a derived quantity. So now I'm done with this particular class. I hope you people might have understood the topics I discussed today. But before I leave, I'd like to give a homework of sorts to you people, a very simple one. Just try and find out all the related different fundamental quantities just ko mathi force ra pressure depend kar sa. Please try to do this whenever you are free. We'll meet again in our next class and discuss these questions. Till then, take care and be safe. Thank you.